I'll scoop that hair kind of out of the way, okay? All right, now we're just gonna flow through this. Start here, so first is just getting in position, and then just start one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. So far so good. All right. Now gently pick the head up, pick a side, and go down right next to C7 if you can, and hook with your fingers. You won't be able to see what you're doing, so please, you know, don't get attached to that starting with that hooking fingers. And what I'm doing is I'm pushing down against my leg at the same time as I'm pushing up on my fingers. So I'm using my leg to get some leverage to, in order to lift up into those points. And of course, I have to just visualize those points. I'm as tight to the spine as I can get without being on the vertebrae. Come all the way up as high as you possibly can to the base of the cranium, okay? And then back down again. Just take your time. And when you get to the bottom, back up again. And I'm just kind of work and slide, work and slide. Try not to scratch. All right, now I'm gonna change sides, go as deep as I can, gently. See how I kind of turned her a little bit into it? is actually in this position, the weight of the head and neck is actually helping me to create pressure when I'm in sort of, you know, at best, I'm in a position of mechanical disadvantage. But because I really need such little pressure. Now let's say I'm working on the neck here and I run into a big freaking spasm. Okay, big freaking spas spastic point, okay? All right, I'm gonna turn her head into that just a little bit, and I'm gonna push up and in, into that point, and hold that for about 10 seconds. You're free to have that emphasis pretty much any time. But also, if you're doing this as part of a long session, you have to watch your time. Because you could, you could actually spend a lot, long, you know, what if they have five or 10? What if all of them are, are in spasm, right? You could, you could do this for an hour, right? You could do this section, it could be an hour treatment. And down, and then back up. But mostly I don't worry about that because it's not about releasing the points. It's about bringing energy, attention, consciousness, breath, and pressure to the line. That's my emphasis. Now, when I get to the base, center of the nose, and I'm gonna push up and in, and there's my cranial lift. And now I just have to relax and just hang on. And I'm going to give her at least 10 or 15 seconds. Sometimes it's helpful if you do just a little rocking. You see that? It's, it doesn't, it's not big. It's just the merest little rocking. What that's doing is communicating to her nervous system that, uh, that the anterior cervical muscles need to let go. And you see her head start to pull back just a little bit. Now on the receiving end, you might literally feel like your neck's gonna break in half, but if you look, her head hasn't actually rolled back half an inch. See, that's, that's the malicious intent of atrophy. It tells us that if we bend, we'll break. And even the slightest motion is gonna cause some catastrophic illness, injury, right? Which of course is not true, okay? All right, now, but what is the main thing that locks this part of the neck up? Fear. Fear. Why do we stop looking up? One of the main reasons. Why? Because I have to pay attention to what's in front of me. Because if I'm lollygagging, hanging around, looking up at the sky, something's going to come up and bite me. I'm going to step in a hole. <laughs> right? I'm walking, I'm looking up, I'm going to step in a hole. Because I don't have confidence on my feet to be able to find their way. Right? Since I don't have confidence in my feet to be able to find their way, uh, I can't rely on my physical circumstances for my, for my safety, then I have to be hypervigilant. And what does that hypervigilance look like? Well, head forward, down, looking down. Okay? And 
even forgetting that there even is a sky. You know, isn't it really amazing uh, that if you just talk to people randomly and ask them, when was the last time you went outside and just looked up at the sky? When was the last time that you went outside and just looked at the stars? I mean, more than a glance. I mean, like, actually looked at, looked at them, looked at the clouds. And people will go, why? Why, why, why would I do that? You know, what's that got to do with me? Okay, well, energetically, that's where the energy is. That's where the prana is. Like Pakru Samai used to say, and we'd say, well, why can't we practice in the air condition? Or why don't we practice outside? You know, why do we have to practice outside? Or why do we have to do sessions outside you know, on the pavilion, the sala? And he would say, well, because the air is out there. And the whole point of the treatment is to move prana, and the prana is out there. So if you really want to move the prana, you got to practice out in the prana, prana soup. Got to go have some prana soup. Now, see, I've just done my crescent both sides, and I'm back to the center, and I'm going to do that cranial lift again. Because this is educational, too. It's not just a release. It is actually educational. And if your client starts to sag and sigh, okay, those are signs that I'm actually stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the same thing as sedating and relaxing. Okay, and then now I'm going to come up the back. Notice the little rock. That's because I'm moving from hand to hand. And I go back down. And I come back up. When I get to the top, I change hand position. And now I'm pushing with the reinforced thumb, just using this little rock to drive my thumbs into the center line. When I get to the hairline, I split. So it's about one and a half times the width of the thumb on each side of the center line. And now I march to the back. Now this makes small circles. You know we did small circles on the abdomen. Now we're doing small circles on the crown. It's very similar. And the crown has a navel too. And that navel, of course, is the crown chakra point, or point by hui. When I get back to the hairline, go to the crown point, it's situated. My hands are about four fingers below my navel. My thumbs on the point, I'm visualizing the pressure moving through her body on a straight line, through the center, through the core of the body, that's that golden thread visualization. And what energy center is approximately four fingers below my navel on the center line? We call that, well it depends on the dialect, Tan Den or Dan Tian, which in Qigong is, is the nuclear reactor. It's where the nuclear reactor in your abdomen is located. That's where I'm coming from. All right, and then I'm going to go to the hairline in nice, soft thumb circles. Out and back and out, finishing in front of the ears. If you get tangled up in the hair, just slip your thumb out and keep going. Slip your thumb out and keep going. Now my 12 lines. Upper forehead, line number one. Press and drag, circle on the opening in front of the ear, the long, the wing gate. Two, upper middle forehead. Just one time. Three, lower forehead. I exhale a little bit every time I draw a line. Four, 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 because I do four three times. That's the eyebrow ridge. Start from as tight to the inside corner of the eye as you can get without poking them in the eyes. Drag across the bone, clearly, and the eyebrow, and circle. And there's my third four. Five, six, and seven are the nose points. I changed my hand position. So now I'm using my fingers as my thumb and circle. Five, six is middle of the nose, across the front of the cheekbone. Five was under the eye. 
six is in the middle. Seven, don't go over the edge, it's on the lowest point of the nose, going outside the nostrils. Pinch these points right at the base of the nostrils, just for a second, and then loop under the cheekbone, up in front of the eye, ear, sorry, ear lump, right? Eight, single point, being careful not to stick your finger in the nose or the mouth, and then two thumbs to spread apart, but it could also be on a smaller person, one finger with the index, and then use two fingers as long as you're scooping. See, I'm clearly under the cheekbone here. Okay, that's eight. Nine, clearly outside the corners of the mouth. Press in. You see the little clown smile, little crazy smile? Come up in front of the ears. Okay, ten. You see the cleft of the chin here? Halfway between the point of the chin and the mouth. Press that point. That's a pressure point. And out. 11 on the front of the jaw. I always pinch so I know I'm right on the top front border of the chin, but draw the line across the front of the chin, up in front of the ears. 12, hook up under the ramus, so you're clearly under the edge. This is where you're going to feel uh, some oxidative residue, lactic acid, uric acid salts, and as you come out a little bit you're going to feel the lymph nodes. If they're dealing with a little bit, maybe a low-grade infection or something, you might feel those lymph nodes a little bit swollen, a little congestion. Come up and circles here. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the ears, and I'm going to twist and pull down from top, bottom to top three times. One and two and three. Okay, then I'm going to grab the center of the ear and I'm just going to situate myself so I can push down and out. Now, it's not straight down, it's literally down and out at about 45 degrees. For you cranial buffs, then you know that the ear is attached to the sphenoid bone and at the apex of the sphenoid bone in front of the foramen magnum is the pineal gland, master hormone regulator. and this drives energy to the center of the brain. Again, this is a sedation technique. It's a very powerful sedation technique. Okay, I'm going to warm up my hands. When I feel them get hot. I take a nice big breath and cup the ears. Get my elbows out, take a breath, and relax. Count to ten. Gently cup the back of the head and just ease out. Now, there we go. If you want it here, put your hands on the shoulders and you could do a little rocking. Okay, and then just leave them alone.